name is Dr. George Sparks, and I am an archaeologist for Bible Interact. I'm going to actually tell you today a true story uh, about an Egyptian antiquity that survived the sinking of the Titanic. So history could be fun and also a little bit mysterious. You probably heard of WrestleMania, but have you ever heard of Egyptomania? It was during the early 19th century that Egyptomania was sweeping across Europe. On the advent of Napoleon's exploration and discovery of the Rosetta Stone, a new admiration for the attaining of rare and exciting Egyptian antiquities had begun. Now, this was also fueled because there was a competition between two scholars, a passionate pursuit, which drove both the British scholar Thomas Young and the French scholar Champollion, and to see who would be the first to decipher the hieroglyphs off the Rosetta Stone. This also motivated both kings and nobles to purchase major artifacts that were being taken out of or maybe looted out of Egypt, which today are displayed in both the British Museum and also the Louvre in Paris. The more common artifacts that were purchased and sold were basically to the wealthy and to the aristocrats. Some of these items would be number one, um, mummy bead necklaces, like I have here. Now, mummies wouldn't actually wear these necklaces. These would be items found in the, uh, the, the funeral offerings or in the coffins of the deceased. And they'd take these beads and they'd string them into a necklace. So the mummy bead necklace was not that the mummy wore the necklace. It's what these items were uh, used for. The second one, would be scarabs, little scarabs, which I'll show you a picture of. And also, thirdly, the, probably the most interesting are the ushaptis. The word ushapti is a Greek word meaning to answer. And these ushaptis, as you see right here, there would be uh, multitudes of these in the tomb, possibly as many as 300 plus. All right. And what these mummies would do, or these ushaptis would do, is that it was believed to come to life after prayer was recited. It would come to life and do the task for its master in the afterlife. All right. Ushapti is spelled U-S-H-A-B-T-I. Ushapti. Now, these artifacts were also collected and placed in what was called curiosity cabinets, like you see behind me right here. Now, during the late 19th century, one such aristocrat which collected antiquities was James Joseph Brown. And now, he was an American aristocrat, a mining engineer, an inventor, and a self-made millionaire, as well as part of the fashionable elitists at that time. All right. It was in 1912 that J.J. Brown, as his friends would call him, purchased a first-class ticket for his wife, Margaret, who would be on board the grand maiden voyage of the most luxurious liner of its age called, you know it, the RMS Titanic. So if you love your wife, you would get her a ticket to the Titanic. It was one of the maiden voyages that, on this White Star Line, sank in the Northern Atlantic on the 15th of April, 1912. It sank among the icebergs, which is collided with, and of the 2,224 passengers, which was estimated, that's plus crew, more than 1,500 perished in the icy waters. Also around, around 700 passengers remained floating all night on board lifeboats in the freezing waters, also while still dodging the icebergs. And it wasn't until the next day that another liner called the Carpathian was able to reach these, these unfortunate or really fortunate outcasts. The wife of this American aristocrat was also among those that was, was saved by the Carpathian. And she was so overjoyed that she gave her lucky charm to the captain of the Carpathian. Who was this mystery, mysterious survivor? Who was the spouse of J.J. Brown, this wealthy aristocrat that bought his wife a first-class ticket on board the Titanic? 
Well, her name was Margaret, or better remembered as Molly. Her name was, or as known, as the unsinkable Molly Brown. What was that lucky charm, that item that she gave the captain of the Carpathian, that she carried with her, the Egyptian relic aboard the Titanic, her lucky charm that would keep her from harm and keep her in the grips of safety? It was her Egyptian, Yushakti, the servant figure that would save and do the task of those wealthy in the afterlife. And that's the true story of an Egyptian artifact that actually survived the sinking of the Titanic. It was a Egyptian Ushapti. And that's my story. Thank you for listening. If you like, remember, subscribe. Now, can we get some ice cream? Sure, let's go get some ice cream. Okay, I get to drive. <laughs>